Hey guys, what's up? This is Tyler from Animator Kid. You might remember over a year ago I did a two-part video about Star Trek's alternate history, exploring the differences between Star Trek's version of Earth and our own between the early 20th century and the mid-21st century. Of course, the concise timeline of events can be viewed on Memory Alpha, with supplemental non-canon materials available for perusing on Memory Beta. But with this mini-series, I wanted to bring a different perspective to the future history established in the show. Specifically, I wanted to take a look at established events and view them through a lens of political and socioeconomic effects, as well as fill in some of the voids using logic and little creativity. Today I want to take a look at the latter half of the 21st century. My last video about Star Trek's alternate history ended around the 2040s, in which I remarked about the next generation's prediction that television would be phased out by the 2040s. This, of course, is not very hard to imagine, since in real life, online streaming services are expected to overtake TV within the next couple decades. Another interesting event predicted by the novelization of the motion picture is the Mind Control Revolt. This refers to a revolution that occurs around 2047 regarding behavior control implants that have become popular in the mid-21st century. Of course, this sounds all too similar to the concept of transhumanism, or the integration of human biology with machines which explains why such persons are not very common in the Star Trek universe. In this same year, the Hermosa earthquake is said to have devastated the western coast of California, clearly a reference to the major earthquake expected to strike Los Angeles sometime this century. A couple years later, the Starfleet Medical Reference Manual claims that humans discovered dilithium on the fifth moon of Jupiter. A couple years after that, aircraft carriers are said to be phased out according to the DS9 Technical Manual, which is only a couple decades off according to reports by the British Royal Navy regarding their new class of carriers, which is expected to continue service until 2070. Of course, the reason these carriers might be phased out early is because of the devastation of the Third World War. What we know about World War III from canon is that it claimed 600 million lives and culminated in the destruction of several cities via nuclear weapons. One of the main combatants is the Eastern Coalition of Nations, which includes China and other Asian states, according to several sources, versus the West and its allies. The Econ, and by extension World War III itself, has its roots in the eugenics wars of the late 20th century, although hostilities don't begin until 2026, as I mentioned in the previous videos. Philip Green and Lee Kuan are two major despots mentioned in canon. The final hours of the war occur in 2053, with an all-out assault on several major cities, as well as the global cybersecurity infrastructure. The aftermath is referred to as the post-atomic horror, and lasts until 2079, according to the Next Generation pilot encounter at Farpoint. This era is marked by a new rise in fascism in the wake of the collapse of several governments. Eugenics and other issues come to the forefront again, with the hunt for fossil fuels also continuing until around 2061. They probably just ran out of oil. Of course, 2063 marks the year of first contact between humans and Vulcans, after Zephram Cochran conducts his historic warp flight, building upon advances in toroidal space-time distortion that had occurred at Cambridge University 11 years earlier. The original series episode, Where No Man Has Gone Before, suggests that humans begin launching warp ships to explore the galaxy within a year, including the SS Valiant and Friendship One, referenced in several episodes of the franchise. Zephram Cochran gives the commencement address at Princeton University in 2064 as well, referencing a group of cybernetic creatures from the future that attempted to stop his warp flight, but were thwarted by a group of humans who were also from the future. This, of course, is a reference to Star Trek First Contact, but his statements are not taken seriously according to the Enterprise episode Regeneration. Towards the latter part of the decade, astronomer John Burke of the Royal Academy maps an area of space that includes Sherman's planet. Also, Earth begins entering into trade agreements with various cultures, presumably including the Vulcans, and possibly fends off an attack from the Zinti, although this last event comes from the animated series, which is not often considered canon. In real life, futurists such as Ray Kurzweil predicted that by the 2070s, humans would be able to manipulate matter on the scale of trillionths of a meter in a method known as pycotechnology. This could explain how certain elements of the Star Trek universe, especially those with atomic numbers above 100, could become stable, even though many are said to be naturally occurring. Of course, by the 2080s, predictions for our own world began to hugely differ from that depicted in the Star Trek universe. For one thing, many futurists agree that the trend of humans becoming cyborgs will continue beyond the mid-21st century, and hyper-intelligent computers will exist by 2083, achieving speeds of over 10 to the 40 calculations per second. In my estimation, the reason we don't see some of these advancements existing in Star Trek's late 21st century, nor do we see things like androids becoming widespread in civilian settings might be because of interference by the Vulcans. 
To be certain, humans during the first several decades following first contact often viewed Vulcans with anger or distrust, according to episodes of Enterprise. Perhaps the Vulcans attempted to control what they saw as explosively advancing technology because they believed humanity would destroy itself otherwise. Alternatively, maybe humans themselves decided at some point to actively hinder their own computational development, perhaps stemming from some event in the mid-21st century regarding androids getting out of control, in a similar fashion to the so-called mind control revolts. Besides this, it's likely that humans are also hard at work trying to restore the atmosphere of their planet, which is both irradiated from World War III and also devastated by climate change, using techniques such as carbon sequestration. This process would presumably continue into the 22nd century and beyond, with humanity achieving global peace by 2113, as stated in First Contact. Also around this time, some things like United Earth and Starfleet are likely to be founded as well. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like and comment and don't forget to share it. I'll be exploring the 22nd century of Star Trek's future history in another video coming in 2018. If you want to support me on Patreon, be sure and click the element on the end screen. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to be awesome. Live long and prosper.